Hello everyone! Today we are taking the ferry to the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. It's July 5th, part of the July 4th holiday weekend, and we are a bit concerned about that since holiday weekends are usually more crowded than other weekends. But it's a gorgeous day. The temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's around 24 degrees Celsius. And the humidity is low. Just a gorgeous day. So we decided to brave the crowds and go. But we had nothing to worry about. Yes, there were a lot of people with the same plans as us, but the lines moved quickly and it didn't feel overly crowded. We bought our tickets online from www.statuecruises.com. On their website, you have a few ticket options. The category called Reserve is for the ferry to both Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty, including the museums on the islands, as well as an audio tour. The second option is the best value for your money. It includes access to the Fort Wood section of the pedestal, but there are a limited number of tickets, so make sure to book early to include this in your visit if you want to. Here you can see the ticket prices for the option without the pedestal. You can see it's $23.50, and here is the current ticket price for the same date with the pedestal option included. You can see this is $23.80. So basically the same price, but you can see that there is only one ticket left on this date a week from today. So book at least one to two weeks in advance if you want to make sure to get access to the Fort Wood section of the pedestal. If you don't, there is still a full day's worth of things to see, and your feet will be tired at the end of the day, even without visiting the pedestal, so no worries. You can choose to take the ferry from Battery Park in Manhattan or from Liberty State Park in New Jersey. The ferry from Battery Park will go first to the Statue of Liberty, then from there to Ellis Island, and then back to Battery Park. If you leave from Liberty State Park in New Jersey, then the ferry will first take you to Ellis Island, then to the Statue of Liberty, and then back to Liberty State Park. You don't have to get off. You can skip Ellis Island and go straight to the Statue of Liberty or vice versa, but we opted to visit both Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty on this trip. Okay, so we left from Liberty State Park in New Jersey. It's an easy, less crowded option than Manhattan if you come by car. There was plenty of parking right near the ferry terminal. The ferry terminal at Liberty State Park is located in the historic Central Railroad of New Jersey. Outside the terminal, you can see remnants of the old railroad tracks and signage explaining what you're seeing. And inside the terminal, you can buy tickets and get some information. But I suggest buying tickets online to make sure that you're not turned away because of overcapacity. Inside the terminal are also bathrooms. They were nice and clean. I checked. Before getting on the ferry, you will need to pass through a security check. It's a bit of a walk from the terminal to another building where the security check takes place. It's similar to airport security. You need to put your things in a bin and off it goes on a conveyor belt for scanning. Then you walk through a metal detector, just like in the airport. And if you're wearing a belt, they'll ask you to take it off, but not your shoes. You can keep your shoes on. Once outside of the security check area, we walked along the Hudson River and were treated to nice views. It's quite a nice walk. I easily got my steps in for the day before we even boarded the ferry. Once we got closer to the ferry, we found that there was already a line waiting for the next departure. But it was a super nice day and great to be outside. The wait was pretty short and the people online were polite. Once we got onto the ferry, there were plenty of choices on where to sit both inside and outside. There's also a concession stand to buy snack items, and there are also restrooms aboard. These I didn't check, so enter at your own risk. The ride from Liberty State Park to Ellis Island is about 15 minutes, and it was a very pleasant and smooth ride. Ellis Island is a small island, and the reason to go there is really to see the museum, which is a short walk from where the ferry lets you off. Behind the museum is an area with picnic tables, and they do sell food there as well, so you can buy or bring your own food. Either way, there is an area where you can sit down for a lunch break, which we did, but first the museum. It's officially called the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration, and from the late 1800s until the 1950s, it was the port of entry for millions and millions and millions of people yearning to come to the United States. 
The museum portrays both the immigrants who came through Ellis Island looking for a better life and also the people who worked on Ellis Island, such as inspectors, interpreters, doctors, nurses, and so on. When you first enter the museum, you are in what's called the baggage room. This is where immigrants could check in their baggage so they didn't have to lug it around throughout the inspection process. That's why it's called luggage. As you can see from this sign, there's lots to see here. If you don't want to walk around by yourself, then sign up for a ranger guided tour or pick up an audio set to follow along with an audio tour. The first floor is replete with history starting at 1550. The exhibits portray the people, where they came from, the culture, the conflicts, lots of history here. Upstairs is the registry room. At first it looks like a big empty room. This is where millions of immigrants were processed, around 5,000 people a day. And this hall is meant to look the same as it did in 1920. At the far end of the hallway, we passed a ranger tour, and then we went through a doorway to an exhibit called Through America's Gate. This led us to many smaller rooms full of exhibits. These exhibits showed how the new arrivals were processed, the inspection process, and literacy tests that were given. We came across a wall that shows the graffiti the new arrivals etched on the wall a hundred years ago. And this is the hearing room that was used for appeals. Around 10% of people who arrived to Ellis Island were not admitted to the United States without a hearing to determine if they should stay or be deported back to their country of origin. People got hungry waiting their turn, so of course there were concession stands to buy food and snacks, and then finally the processing was done and people were free to travel to their final destinations. Some people were not so lucky to be admitted into the United States. Some were sick and some actually died at Ellis Island and some were born on Ellis Island. Next, we boarded the ferry to the Statue of Liberty. No one checks your tickets again, so make sure you are boarding the right ferry. Just follow the signs. The ferry is really very large, so even though this was July 4th weekend, it didn't feel crowded. And just in case, the life jackets are in the ceiling above your head. One flight up is a covered outdoor seating area, and then one more flight up, and it's out in the open which is where we want it to be. So now we're leaving Ellis Island and on our way to the Statue of Liberty with a nice view of Manhattan in the distance. After about 15 minutes, we got closer to the Statue of Liberty, circled around a bit. No one was in a rush to get there since the ferry ride is a treat of its own. Pick a nice day to go and you will really enjoy the ride. And here we are, Liberty Island. You can also take a ranger tour here. They meet at the flagpole, but we were going at our own speed, so first stop, the Statue of Liberty Museum. This is included with any ticket you buy, so let's head on in and see what's there. First, it was a movie about the history of the Statue of Liberty. It was a standing room theater, no seats. Actually, there were three theaters. We went from one to the next and the next for a total of about 10 minutes viewing time. The museum itself has exhibits on the history of the making of a statue and the history behind the giving of the statue by France. This is a full-scale model of the statue's foot. And there were many more exhibits about how the statue was designed, an engineering feat, and how it was transported to the United States, a logistical feat. This is the original torch. It was removed in 1984 and was too badly damaged to be restored, so it was replaced with a replica in 1985. Outside the museum, we took a flight of stairs up, and then another flight of stairs, two flights of stairs up to the terraced area with a beautiful view of the Manhattan skyline and the flagpole and Lady Liberty. You really have to come here on a nice day to appreciate this, we were blessed with a beautiful day, totally. Just look at these beautiful views. Next, we decided to do a walk around Liberty Island. I ended up with 12,000 steps for the day. Not a bad day. Okay, let's do a speed walk. Get those steps in. And here we are at a crossroad of sorts. 
we decided to continue hugging the river edge and circling the Statue of Liberty. Remember, this is July 4th weekend and it doesn't feel crowded because it's a large enough area to disperse all the people. There were a few spots that felt crowded, but for the most part, it was really fine. When we were finished circling, we came across some statues, and these were statues of people who make statues. Interesting. When we were good and tired, we decided to go home. There was a line for the ferry, but it's really not bad. You just have to wait until the ferry comes. And once the ferry comes, the line moves quickly. Again, they don't check your tickets, so make sure you're going where you want to go. If you want to go back to Liberty State Park in New Jersey, this is the line. But if you want to go back to Battery Park, you need to take the ferry on the other side. It will first stop at Ellis Island, then Battery Park. This New Jersey ferry already stopped at Ellis Island, so now we're going back straight to Liberty State Park. A last look at Lady Liberty, and we were on our way back. Did I mention what a beautiful day this was? We passed a sister ship on its way to the Statue of Liberty, and we had a spectacular view of the Freedom Tower. And after around 15 or 20 minutes, we were back to where we started from many hours ago. Same dock, same historic railroad building, same ferry terminal, and yes, that's where the bathrooms are. We walked past the historic rail lines, past an old railway train, and soon we were back at our car and driving off into the sunset. A peaceful end to a wonderful day at the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button to help my channel grow. I really appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Bye.